Hi, welcome to the shop. This time we have a new project. Um, some time ago I acquired this very nice little dividing head. It's a dividing head for an engraving machine sold by Deckel for their range of engraving machines or copy milling machines. It's a light duty dividing head. It's mostly for engraving and very light uh, milling operation. It has an integral 3 jaw chuck. It can be if you if you loosen this nut it can be tilted from laying down flat all the way up to 90 degrees and in every position in between and you can lock it. On this side with this thimble you rotate the, the spindle of the dividing head and you can also disengage the, the warm gear inside here with with this lever on this side you can disengage the worm and you can free spin it and then just re-engage it. This is a very nice unit. It's, it, it's, it's used but it has almost no wear to it. Um, only problem I have with it is that I have only the outside stepped jaws for it. So I do a lot of very small work so um, these jaws are not very helpful for me. And I decided to make my own set of inside stepped jaws. This is what I came up with. Um, these have the same outer dimension as the outside stepped jaws, but um, of course they are stepped in the other direction. Um, I will machine them from this piece of tool, so, mold steel. It's pre-hardened to 33, 35 Rockwell and it machines very nice. So I will use this so I don't have to heat treat them later. The raw material is just a sawn piece of steel and is not parallel. I let one side rest against the jaw and put some shims in the center of the other side. So this is just brass shim stock. So when I clamp it, I get a three point contact. I, um, the part sits against the fixed jaw and I have a push point on the movable jaw and this way the part can't move on me. Just bend the shim stock a bit down. Clamp everything. Now I've mounted my push type tool holder. That means the cutting edge of the tool bit is faced against the machine. I do this because it's a more rigid setup and the chips don't fly all over in the workshop. Um, that means the tool tips this way, not like a, on a conventional clapper box in, the, in this way. It um, tips to the front. Cut of depth of one millimeter and I feed 
0.12 millimeters per stroke in. This is a pretty heavy cup for this light machine, but it handled it just fine. Okay, we are down to 14.1 millimeters, and now I'm changing over to my finishing bit. I'm using it. I'm using a tool bit with a big radius and a very steep lead angle, like a vertical shear bit on a lathe. Um, this works very well on a shaper, it gives uh, almost a mirror-like finish. And let's change over. And I'm taking a cut of one tenth of a millimeter. For the vertical shear bit or the radius finishing tool I can increase my feed by a significant amount. Okay, I'm done machining the outer dimensions on the shaper. I got it to thickness, so <coughs> so it fits the slot in the chuck pretty precise. Okay, what I'm going to do now is we are going to machine these two slots that will fit this area of the chuck. And we're doing this also on the shaper with a with a slotting tool. This looks like a um, it looks like a parting tool on the lathe but um, we're using it in the shaper and in fact, a shaper is, you can almost think of it like a lathe with linear moving instead of rotation. So, almost everything that works on the lathe works also on the shaper. I'm using my shop made tool holder with a very small parting tool or slotting tool for, to cut the slot. I can not, I will not cut the slot at full width with um, such a broad, a broad tool because I don't think my machine will handle this. And here I'm checking if my part is leveled in the Y so um, my slot gets a cons constant depth over the whole length. I'm just running the dial test indicator along and it's almost running a shaper always when you have set up a cut, um, hand crank the machine. Look if anything collides with anything. Um, a crash on a shaper can be pretty bad for the machine and your workpiece or your tool or yourself. So be safe. Okay, I got the first side done and I'm going to cut the slot in the second side. Um, this time I'm aiming the camera directly at the cutting or at the or at the workpiece so you can see the chip build. This tool I ground is very well cutting it 
it rolls a nice chip and it leaves a pretty good finish and the forces involved are okay it's not overstressing anything on the shaper as far as I can judge so let's take let's crank it through by hand and give it some Okay, we have the profile done. I machined the outer dimensions and the two slots and I also relieved this this portion. I made it a bit um, bit narrower so it doesn't interfere with the chuck body. Um, now we can try to fit it into a slot as the spur doesn't go all the way out to it. So let's try this. And this is a pretty nice fit and yeah, this is this is nice. This is a nice fit. Yeah, this is a bit this is a bit on the this is a bit lighter. This is also pretty pretty perfect. As you can see, I have this long lever and it's got almost no play in it. So I'm on the I think I'm on the right way to make these jaws. Next step will be to cut the jaws apart or the profile apart so I get three little jaws. Then I will go over to the copy milling machine and machine the serrations. Final work that has to be done is um, chamfering the front edges of the jaws and machining the stepped outside contour and also the hand finishing to the chuck. Um, each jaw will get fitted to each or to its um, corresponding um, slot so everything is running nicely but tight. Um, what I will also do when I have it finished I'll put the jaws in, preload it with a ring in the center and bore the jaws out so I get a perfect um, run out or no run out. But I will show this in, um, in the next part of this project. Thank you for watching so far.